information, I said, well, the first thing I got to do is go out and make sure that people have actually changed the paint. I have to go visit some stations. So the first station I visited was in my own hometown, at the Chico State University Agricultural Farm, an experiment station. They had a USHCN station of record, US Historical Climatological Network. And when I opened it up and looked at it, I discovered, well, they converted it to automation rather than a manual reading. But what I saw really shocked me. This was the temperature sensor. You open up that box there, and inside of here is radio gear. They, they radio the, the temperature signal out to the weather service about 60-some miles south. Electronics generates heat. Everyone knows this. And yet, we have the thermometer just a few inches from heat generating electronics. Who does this? I thought, this was crazy, but I figured, well, I keep looking. Went to Orland, California, saw a perfect station, perfectly sighted, everything was normal, it had been repainted with latex, I figured the first one with the University Farm was a fluke. And then I visited Marysville, California, and this was an eye-opener for me. This station had been converted from the old Stephen screens to the new, what's called MMTS, which is this little thing here, it looked like a beehive on a pole. This is where the fire chief parks his truck, radiator in. Mm -hmm. Over here are these two electronics buildings to run the cell phone tower. The town had rented out this space at the fire station for this electronic cell phone tower here, and they were getting money for this rental. Now, I could stand here next to the thermometer, and I could feel air conditioning, heat exchanger, exhaust blowing on me. And I said to myself, this is where we measure climate? This, has, this can't be right. I now had two out of three stations I visited in the network that had problems. One had a heat generating electronics package, another one had air conditioners blowing on it in the middle of a parking lot. What's going on? I looked at the temperature record between New Orleans and Marysville. There was a difference. Not surprising given that I'm, in one of them I'm measuring heat exchanger exhaust in the parking lot. So I started looking around some more. The National Weather Service in Monterey had a Stevenson screen mounted over cinder block, uh, cinder uh, ash right down there. And then there was the one in Woodland, California, which was a co-op station, not part of the historical network. It was in a parking lot, too. I started talking with Dr. Roger Puke at the University of Colorado, and he and I got together, and he'd done some studies and found that he'd done similar things, found things in Colorado very similar. So we decided together to put together a website basically to have a portal where people could sign up and then an image database where they could submit photos and measurements to talk about and, and, and document the sighting issues. And what I'm going to show you now are some of the sighting issues we found all around the United States. I've personally visited about 180 weather stations in the United States ranging from California to Idaho, Nevada, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, um, North and South Carolina, Virginia, and into Tennessee and Arkansas. I've been all over. We find them over gravel, right next to where they could be over grass. Normally, the specification is over grass. We find them over volcanic cinder. We find them over more volcanic cinder and uh, next to buildings. We find them over wood chips. You know, I never thought wood chips would be hot, but until you walk on it in broad sunlight, you discover that they actually make quite a bit of heat. They're pretty warm, actually warmer than the pavement. This station here uh, has its MMTS center, sensor mounted up on this tower here. Down here there's a boat, which we think is there for catastrophic sea level rise. <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting about this station is this is the second sighting of the station. This is what it used to look like. This is where it was before. They had to move it because they were having vandalism issues. Now, which one of these do you think is cooler? This one or this one? Next to a building, next to parking, next to an aluminum boat in the sunlight, no grass around, no trees around. Interesting. So people started sending me photos. The volunteers signed up at the website. They started sending in pictures. This one is from Midland, Michigan at a sewage treatment plant. Here's the side view of it. The curator there told me when it snows in the winter, there's never any snow around here that sticks. And I asked him why. He says, well, you see that vent right there? There's an underground tank, and this vents warm air out. Mm -hmm. And there's where we measure the temperature. 
In the 30 years I've been involved in meteorology in one way or another, I never in my wildest dreams thought that we would measure temperature at sewage treatment plants. But it's a fact. And the reason for it has to do with warm bodies. Not the kind that are in the sewage, but the kind that have to write down the temperature every day. When the whole network was put together in the 1890s, it was all done by hand. There was no electronics. People would look at the mercury thermometer, read it, write it down into a logbook, mail the sheet of the logbook into the climatic data center once a month. <coughs> and so everything was manually done. They had to have someone there seven days a week. And so places that got chosen for measuring climate were things or places that were manned seven days a week. And these are basically then translated to fire stations, ranger stations, uh, sometimes schools or universities, and yes, sewage treatment plants, because the sewage just never stops. There's got to be somebody there all the time. Found one in Urbana, Ohio, where the MMPS was mounted on the wall, and this is where the raw sewage comes in here. And then there's this thing, which is a refrigeration unit. And I asked them, why is there a refrigeration unit there? And they said, well, when the guys are out there working on the equipment, they have to run the refrigeration unit because it gets so hot in here that we don't, they'll faint. <laughs> this is where we measure climate? I found them in North Carolina. This one here is a, a, near an incinerator. There's an open sewage pit right over here and here. And the MMTS itself is moldy and blackened. And so the albedo of the, the sensor has changed. It was getting darker, so obviously it would pick up more sunlight. At Cape Canaveral, Titusville, Florida, the sewage treatment plant, right next to NASA, right next to the sewage, right on top there. For those of you that know chemistry, you know that the processing of sewage is a heat generating process. This is a wastewater treatment plant in Ontario, Oregon. This is what it looks like in visible light. This is what it looks like in infrared light. The outside temperature measured by my automobile thermometer at that time was zero degrees centigrade. The temperature of the tanks, 13.3 centigrade. So if you put a thermometer near that, do you think it's going to be warmer? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Infrared also plays a factor in heat absorption. Here's a, a water treatment plant, and it's a few feet away from this wall here. This is in broad sunlight. But here's what the infrared looks like. At night, all of that heat that's absorbed in the wall gets re-radiated toward the sensor, and it brings the nighttime lows up. And we found this time and again. This is one that's in someone's backyard. They have a pool right here. You can see the pool's rather cool. You can see the wall here. Their windows are nicely insulated. They're not letting out much heat, but the walls themselves are letting quite a bit of heat out. Why should we put thermometers next to buildings? Well, it seems that the Weather Service hasn't been paying much attention to that. This was in Perry, Oklahoma was right on the street. This is the public sidewalk, right here. There's the fire station. Parking within about four or five feet. In Fayetteville, North Carolina, I visited this station personally just after it had finished raining. And you can see this is dark here because it's wet. But even after it's wet, there's still a lot of heat there radiating to the sensor. We found all kinds of things with the station. There were concrete pads that absorbed heat and re-radiated at night. Next to brick walls that radiate heat at night and over concrete pads. No snow on this concrete pad. Plenty over here. Wonder why. Found them at airports, right next to the tarmac. This one here, something happened to the center and they ended up just strapping it to the deck. You think the deck's a little warmer in the sunlight? Probably. Air conditioning units, blowing out exhaust, there's the temperature sensor. This looks nice and warm during the day when the sun hits it. Next to buildings, we found a lot of that. A heated building, right next to the temperature sensor. What are we really measuring? And this one really struck home with me because, you know, you hear things about the Great Plains of the United States, wide open spaces. This is Hay Spring, Nebraska. This is in the, essentially about as middle of nowhere as you can get in the United States. Here's the Great Plains. Nothing mm -hmm. as far as the eye can see. Where do they put the temperature sensor? Three feet from the building. 